Today we'd like to solve an important indeterminate limit problem, namely the limit as theta approaches zero of sine theta divided by theta. This is a particularly important problem because we need its solution in order to determine the derivatives of the trigonometric functions. So because the sine of zero is zero, this would be classified as a zero over zero type indeterminate limit. To solve the problem, we're going to do it geometrically by placing upper and lower bounds on the ratio sine theta to theta. So to that end, consider this figure that displays uh, two right triangles and a sector of the unit circle. Okay. Um, Suppose that the uh, specific, specifically suppose that this acute angle Q prime O P prime represents our angle theta, and that the length of O Q and O P prime are both one, and then the arc Q P prime is the arc of is an arc of the unit circle, an arc of the circle of radius one. Okay. Now, specifically, if we focus on the right triangle OPQ, we know that uh, the cosine of the acute angle theta is the ratio of the adjacent to the hypotenuse. So the cos theta is OP over OQ. But remember that OQ, right, that was known to be 1. And therefore, the cos theta is OP over 1, or or cos theta is OP. The length of the adjacent side is the cosine of theta. And uh, similarly, the sine of the angle theta is the ratio of the opposite to the hypotenuse. So the sine theta is QP over OQ. But again, OQ being known to be one unit in length makes the sine of theta equal to QP. Okay, so the opposite side in this right triangle is simply the sine of theta. Okay, so we also know that the tangent of theta is the ratio of the opposite to the adjacent, right? And so therefore, uh, the tangent of theta is QP over OP. However, we also notice that the triangle OPQ and OP prime Q prime, they are equiangular triangles as the angle at P and the angle at P prime, they're both right angles. Both of these triangles possess a common angle at the vertex O, and, and as a consequence, the angle at Q and the angle at Q prime must also be equal. So we know, of course, from geometry that equiangular triangles are proportional. They're classified as Sometimes, right, we call them similar triangles. And so that means that the ratios of their corresponding sides would be the same. So the ratio of QP to OP is the same as Q prime P prime is to OP prime. Okay, but, but we know that OP prime is 1, and therefore this yields a result that the tangent of theta is a length of Q prime P prime. That this side is the ratio of sine theta to the cos theta or the tangent of the angle theta. So let's make one more remark while, while studying this figure um, and that is regarding the area of the sector of the circle O P prime Q. So to derive the value of the area, we could use the fact that um, the ratio of the area of the sector to the area of the full unit circle must be the same as the measure of the central angle of the sector is to the measure of the central angle of the full circle. Well, of course, the full circle has central angle 2 pi. And so we get the, the, the relation that uh, the, the area of sector to the area of the unit circle 
is theta over 2 pi. However, of course, it's well known the area of the, the unit circle, pi r squared, reduces to pi times 1, or just pi. So upon multiplying both sides of this equality by pi, we conclude that the area of our sector O, o p prime q must be equal to simply theta over 2. Okay, and so now um, let's compare the areas of the figures involved uh, in the picture. So we have this uh, right triangle OPQ that's inscribed within the, the sector OP prime Q. Thus, the area of the triangle is necessarily less than the area of the sector. And in turn, the sector is, is contained within the large right triangle. And so the area of the sector is less than that of the large right triangle O P prime Q prime. And so now given the, the analysis and the lengths that we had determined, uh, we see simply the area of triangle O P Q, one half base times height becomes one half sine theta times cos theta. Okay, the, the area of our sector OPQ, OP prime Q, sorry, it should be a prime there, sector OP prime Q, uh, we just found to be theta divided by two. And the area of, of the large right triangle OP prime Q prime is one half the base times the height. The base is one, the height is a tangent theta or sine theta over cos theta. So therefore, um, the, 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 uh, the, these area relations yield this, this inequality, right, that's valid for any value of the acute angle theta, which could range from zero to pi over two. So if we uh, multiply through uh, all sides of this inequality by two over sine theta, we find that uh, uh, the left side simplifies to just the cosine theta, right? And the product in the middle becomes, right, the twos cancel theta over sine theta. The, the left, the, the right side uh, simplifies to simply one over the cos theta as the uh, the twos cancel from numerator and denominator as to the sine theta. And so thus we have this uh, compound inequality, okay, that follows uh, from, from geometrically from the picture here. So now let's just uh, step back and, and recall this simple principle, this property of real numbers. Suppose we have a, a pair of positive numbers A and B where A is, is less than B. So suppose we then uh, multiply through each side of our inequality by one over A times B. So of course zero times anything is zero. A times one over AB is one over B. B times one over AB is one over A, right? And so we can conclude that uh, zero will be less than A will be less than B if and only if zero is also less than one over B, which in turn is less than one over A. So, so what we're saying here essentially is that, you know, whenever we take reciprocals of positive numbers, we reverse their order relation, right? Because A was less than B, then the reciprocal of B will in turn be less than the reciprocal of A. So if we apply that principle in this uh, compound inequality asterisk, uh, we take the reciprocal of the cosine theta. Now that will exceed the reciprocal of theta over sine theta, which in turn must exceed the reciprocal of one over cos theta. So in other words, we get this inequality, again, valid for all theta from zero to pi over two. So we may simply uh, uh, rewrite this inequality equivalently saying the cos theta is less than sine theta over theta, which in turn is less than 
1 over the cos theta for all acute angles theta. Okay, fine. So, so what we'd like to establish is that um, this inequality is also valid when theta is negative, when theta is, say, between minus pi over 2 and 0, that this inequality must still be true. So, so that actually is not too hard to prove. Uh, we simply have to recall um, some of the basic identities involving the sine and cosine. Uh, namely, the, uh, recall that the cosine is an even function, that the cosine of minus theta is always the same as the cosine of theta. That we know to be true for all real numbers theta. Okay, however, the sine, if you recall, is odd. The sine of negative theta is always minus the sine of theta for all angles theta. And so, so therefore, uh, if we consider the ratio sine minus theta to minus theta, right, because the sine is odd, we could replace the sine of minus theta as minus sine theta over minus theta, right? And now the negatives cancel, so we have sine minus theta over minus theta is the same as sine theta over theta. Again, valid certainly for any theta between uh, 0 and pi over 2. So now consider uh, the fact that, you know, the cosine is even, and therefore 1 over the cos of minus theta must be the same as 1 over the cos theta. Again, for all theta between 0 and pi over 2 since the cos of minus theta is always the same as the cos theta. Okay, so now, based on all of these previous results, we could say the following. Okay, so let's, let's uh, recall the formula 1, the inequality 1. Okay, and notice that because the cosine is even, we could replace, right, the cos theta as the cos of minus theta, right? These are equal. So we could substitute here cos theta and replace it by the cos of minus theta. Okay, and we just showed uh, that the sine of minus theta, <clears throat> um, the sine of minus theta over minus theta is the same as sine theta over theta. And so therefore, again, we could uh, substitute sine theta over theta in, in, in inequality 1 with sine of minus theta over minus theta. And then again, you know, because the cosine is even, we know <coughs> that 1 over the cos of minus theta is the same as 1 over the cos theta. And thus again, we could make the substitution in equation 1 1 over the cos theta, replace it by 1 over the cos of minus theta. And so therefore, we, we have uh, that this uh, compound inequality is true for all theta from 0 to pi over 2. Now, now if we look at inequality 1, you know, this formula 1, and this, this inequality 6, uh, we, could, we could combine them and simply write that cos theta is less than sine theta over theta is less than 1 over cos theta, that that must be true for all theta between minus pi over 2 and 0 or theta between 0 and pi over 2, right? Uh, of course, we knew that this was true for the positive thetas here from formula 1, but you see for formula 6, when when theta is between 0 and pi over 2, then minus theta would be an angle between minus pi over 2 and 0. And so, so therefore, we have uh, this statement, okay, that's valid for all theta, you know, uh, to the left of, of 0 and to the right of 0, between negative pi over 2 and 0, or between 0 and pi over 2. And, and now, with that in mind, uh, we're in a position, finally, where we could take limits, okay, in this inequality, take limits on all sides as theta approaches zero. So what, what does that 
what, what does that lead us to, to find? Well, um, as theta approaches zero, uh, the cosine of theta, uh, <coughs> well, the limit of, of that quantity must be uh, less than that of the sine of theta over theta as theta approaches zero. Or, or possibly they could be equal, right? Because the fact that the cos theta was always less than sine theta over theta near zero, then as, as we approach zero, uh, the, the inequality must be preserved, or, or perhaps uh, at worst, they would equal one another. And similarly, the fact that the sine theta over theta was always less than one over the cos theta means uh, when we take their limits, right, as theta approaches zero, the inequality is preserved or, or possibly, you know, we, we obtain uh, equality. Uh, so, so, so we have uh, this order relation between the limits of these three functions as theta approaches zero. And, and what's, what's interesting, of course, is because the cosine of zero is one, we see the lower bound on the limit of sine theta over theta as theta approaches zero must be one, but also, of course, one over the cosine of zero is also one. And so, so, so uh, the value for the limit of sine theta over theta at zero has to be bounded above and below by one, so that that leaves no possible value for the limit except being one itself, right? Because one is the only number that would satisfy this inequality. And so, so that would be our solution to the limit problem for the sine of theta over theta as theta approaches zero. And we could, we could uh, see uh, graphically that uh, th this, this limit must be true because uh, when we plot the graph of uh, the cosine of theta, y equals the cosine of theta, okay, of course, we have this cosine wave, uh, of course, uh, at minus pi over 2 or pi over 2, the cosine is 0. At 0, the cosine is 1, okay? And then if we look at the, the upper bounding function, uh, which was y equals 1 over the cosine theta, right? So again, you know, at um, 0, cosine of 0 is 1. So the value uh, uh, 0, 1 is on the graph of this curve. And as we approach, as theta approaches pi over 2 or minus pi over 2, because the cosine goes to, to 0 at both values, then 1 over the cosine of theta is going to become unbounded. And so the graph of y equals 1 over the cos theta has the vertical asymptotes x equals to pi over 2 and x equals minus pi over 2. And so then finally, let's look at the, the intermediate function here, y equals sine theta over theta. Okay, so again, it's undefined at theta equals zero, right? Division by zero is undefined. However, we see that, again, it's bounded between these two curves uh, on the left of zero and on the right of zero. And therefore, the limit of the intermediate function as theta approaches zero must be that the common limit from above and below, which was one. So the limit at zero of sine theta over theta is in fact one, even though of course sine zero over zero is undefined. So I hope you found this presentation to be instructive, and uh, and, and we'll we'll use it in our upcoming uh, this result in our upcoming presentation on the derivatives of sines and cosines. So thank you for watching. Goodbye.